What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel, and in this video we are going to talk about the sort by function and it's part of the collections library that we've been going over and this is one of those really useful functions that as long as you know how to use it it will make your life infinitely easier when you're uh, working on pretty much anything. So with that let's go ahead and get started. We'll open up our project tab we will create a new file. This one will be called sort by. We'll close out of our reduce tab. We will zoom in. We'll create a new main function. And we will go ahead and get started. So as part of the sorting uh, video, there is a really simple function that you can run that won't actually work for our books. And I'll show you why, but I'll, I'll first lead with the actual example of it, where it is this, let's say we have this list of values. They're just numbers. They're not in any particular order. They're pretty random. And let's say that we want to do um, this list sorted. We can do that, and I'm going to do also, and then print line with the value. And then if we go ahead, we run this, you'll see that now the list is sorted from lowest to highest number. And all we had to do is add this sorted function. Pretty neat. So why can't we do that for our library? Well, let's first take a look. So we do books. And since Kotlin will autocomplete and it knows like what functions are available for this list, we can do dot and sorted and you will see it doesn't you know it, it exists but the books don't have the correct interface to satisfy the sorted function and so this gets into like really interesting like um object oriented programming concepts and all of that fun stuff but the main thing the main takeaway for this video in terms of why we can't use the sorted function on our books is our books don't implement the comparable interface and we're not going to make them implement the comparable interface just because one I don't know like in terms of books like how would you want to sort them will it be alphabetical always will it sometimes be price it's a little bit difficult so I don't want to make them directly comparable because the use cases are always going to be probably different so <laughs> End of the video? No, not really, uh, because Kotlin gives you some other nice operators. And so if we do library, and then books, and then sorted by, and then we have our book, we can then say book.title. So the sorted by, this still needs a comparable, but you're able to grab that comparable object from the the operator itself and so in our case everything with the book is going to have something that is comparable or like the the values that make up a book are all inherently comparable so in this example our title is a string and a string can be compared it'll just be from it'll be alphabetical order by default and then we can do a for each loop just to kind of show what it looks like we'll do print line it dot title and then if we run the code again you'll see that now it prints out all of our books from a to z everything is everything's good there are some other sort operators though that we can run so let's say we have again we have our library of books and then let's say we want it to be instead in descending order well pretty simple we just do book dot title same thing and then we can just copy our for each function. And then we can go ahead and run this. And then you will see now instead of being A to Z, it's Z to A. We're not done yet though. There's some more, more things that we can do revolving around the ordering and the sorting of, um, of objects. So let's say that we want our books to be in reverse order. We can say library books so first we'll just do our for each and I'll do print line 
it.book, or sorry, it.title. When we go ahead and we run this, we'll see, so the Harry Potter books are at the end, zero to one is at the beginning. That's just because that's the order that I added the books into the library. So that's just its own inherent ordering. Let's say instead though, we want this to be reversed. Well, we run the reversed function and you'll see now zero to one is at the bottom and the Harry Potter books are up at the top. So we have one more uh, order function that I want to talk about, and that is going to be with uh, if we don't care about the order. The order is irrelevant. Well, let's first start off. We'll do sorted by, and then we'll say it.title. So sorted by title alphabetically. And then just to kind of prove it, we'll do print line it.title just to show that it, it prints it out alphabetical order. Now let's say that we want it to just be shuffled. So in any order, well, we run it and now we can see, you know, why we sleep is here. I'm seeing like some of the Harry Potter books are, are shuffled up. So you can give it a random order and shuffled, you know, there are, there are probably some use cases in um, applications where you'd want to do that just to say like, I don't know, maybe you have a deck of cards and you want to shuffle it, for example. Where I found that this actually works out much more often is for unit testing. So if I have a bit of code where I want to verify that it is being sorted correctly and I want to make sure that it's always sorted correctly and I, I'm starting off with data that isn't sorted, well, using shuffled on a collection that's already ordered can do that. And so real quick, just to kind of, just to show you what that would look like, um, I'll copy this, this one over. We don't need the for each. What I would do is I would say val uh, a to z books equals that. And then we can do val shuffled books equals a to z books dot shuffled. So for like the test itself, I would just ensure that after the sorted function is ran, um, I would start off by passing in the shuffled books to whatever function I'm, I'm testing. And then I would just verify that a to z books is, is being returned. So useful little, little hack that I found or little, little tip for testing where shuffled works out really well. Again, main takeaway is anything that is being ran through a sorted by function, it has to, something has to implement comparable. And so most often if you're dealing with an integer, a string, any sort of primitive value, they will inherently have a comparable interface. For any custom objects, you would have to implement those yourself. So again, we can't just do sorted by book with book we have to actually dig into something that is inherently comparable in itself. Uh, and yeah, that is, that's it. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. More than happy to answer them. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.